Today is Laetare Sunday. In the middle of this penitential season of walking with Christ to Jerusalem, to his passion and death, the church, as it were, breaks out into laughter. It's almost as if we're unable to take the dour purple of Lent seriously. The church is impatient, like a child eyeing Easter eggs, picking them up when no one is looking, scratching them, sniffing the chocolate. Even our bishops are dressed up like Easter eggs today. Jesus Christ, crucified by us and for us, will rise from the dead, not just to say no, no, no to his persecutors, but no, no, no to death itself, our last enemy, and to sickness, ignorance, and sin, death's allies, and so our enemies too. Is no, 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 is proclaimed not just on his own behalf, but on behalf of us all. For at Easter we will sing of that happy fault of Adam's sin that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. So great and so glorious a redemption for us. Try as we humans may to extinguish Christ our light. He emerges from the darkness on Easter night as enlightenment and hope for us all. Though we regularly prefer hostility, ignorance, sickness and sin, he rises from the tomb offering peace, wisdom, health and holiness. Though we all too often choose mortal sin, and so death, yet hope springs up again, and eternal life can be ours. Hence the rose-coloured vestments. Hence the prayers today that speak of joy in the midst of Lent. Not that Christianity looks at the world through rose-tinted glasses. Far from it. As the Gospel reminds us, though God came to his own, they did not receive him. Though the light came into the world, men preferred darkness. Though the word became flesh, we lifted him up on the cross. And there on the cross, Christ will be stripped of everything. His divinity, dignity, comfort and success. Stripped of his clothes, his friends, his life. For he has entered fully into the human mess of thirst, anguish, isolation, failure. The mess in every family community, church. So too must his church in every generation, identifying most closely with those who carry a cross. So Christianity cannot be a rosy-eyed religion. No, ours is a brutally realistic view of the world. It knows about victims and their suffering. Victims of injustice and war, of disability and disease, of depression, whether economic or psychological, of loneliness or compulsion, of sinfulness and powerlessness of so many kinds. 
Yet amidst all this black and blue, the purple of bruises, true Christians remain optimistic, rosy-hearted, as it were. Wowzers take a dim view of the rosy things of the world and the flesh, of Christmas presents and Easter eggs, and associated vices such as singing, dancing and smiling. They think being religious means being grim, dour, repressed, censorious, pessimistic. But our faith speaks in a very different language. Despondent Israel in our first reading will be redeemed, the temple rebuilt, the people returned home. Or as Paul said so beautifully in our epistle, though dead through our sins, we are brought again to life by God's grace, making us God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life. Each one of you is a work of sacred art, of music, painting, architecture, but in flesh and spirit. Painted or carved or sung by Christ to beautify our universe, inspire our neighbours, give glory to God. which seems to bring us to something of an emotional stalemate. How can we be realistic yet joyful, confident without clowning, purple and rose at the same time? How is it possible without self-contradiction, without split personality, to be both truthful and jubilant? self-assured without being facile, optimistic without romanticising. And where is this God who was supposed to want the good life for us, to want us to be happy, if so many people are suffering? God so loved the world he gave his only son. To be with us in the mess, but to lead us beyond it also. The folly of the cross will be the moment of Christ's glorification and our redemption. The ultimate revelation of divine love, of the justice and vindicating power of God's love a love that keeps on loving even in the depths of betrayal and murder, a love that meant the recent Coptic martyrs of IS could say the name of Jesus as they died, a definitive love that gives itself completely for others rather than focusing on self. The irony of that tree upon which the Son of Man must be lifted up is this, that in the very act of total self-surrender to God and others, of total self-giving for the sake of truth and love, we are given back ourselves and more. More. The Son of Man must be lifted up on the cross, as Moses in the desert lifted up the serpent on a stick. John tells us this morning. Now a serpent on a cross-shaped stick, we all know, is the symbol of doctors, of medicine, of healing. Christ's death and rising will be our medicine. 
for by his wounds we are healed. In giving ourselves with Christ, we are graced to be more and to do more than we could ever be or do alone. Our Catholic faith and life lifts us up out of present cares and gives us back to them with new vision and hope, ready to comfort and confront, open-eyed yet rosy-hearted. As we celebrate today Laetare Sunday, remember Paul's call to you to be God's works of art, made for the good life. In seeing the beauty of your life, may others learn that God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that those who believe should not be lost, but may have eternal life. <laughs>